been doing? I've been training like that. Yeah, mate. Yeah, so no, it's it's been good, isn't it? It's been a bit shit, like uh, like for everyone. You know what I mean? Um, not a lot to do. Yeah. Uh, other than other than gym and that, but no, nah, it's all good, bro. All good. Yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, still getting to work and that, still getting on, but uh, yeah. Talking about the sparring partners and that, if a lot of the gyms are closed down, uh, how you been doing? Um, so recently, um, so I tore my I tore a ligament in my elbow just before New Year. Yeah. So I've been rehabbing, I've been rehabbing that and stuff uh, the last couple of weeks, but um, before that, I was I was going up to uh, Birmingham, up to Phyllis MMA with uh, Jake Hadley, um, yeah. and and all them boys sparring up there. So that's that's what I'll be doing as soon as I, I as soon as I can spar and go back to uh, yeah. full training again, and yeah. I'm and I'm all in, like injuries healed. That's yeah. that's where I'll be going probably up there and 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 then obviously my home gym. Dragons there with the boys there. Yeah. So. How often do you um? You, uh, is it the MMA lab in it in uh yes, Arizona? Yeah. You, you spend a lot of your fight camps out there. Or is it actually fight camps you go over to? How do you split your time like between here and uh, uh, over so, there? So at, uh, well, what the plan was because obviously with turning pro now, um, I wanted to do all my all my camps over there. Like yeah. money as as long as I could get the money for it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do all all my camps over there. Um, obviously, Rona fucked that right up. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, that that that's the plan is to get over there as, as soon as I can, sort of thing, really. Um, but mm. like usually before, it would be I'd go over there twice, try to get over there twice, twice, twice a year. Mm. Yeah. Um, to to get the camps in for my fights, mm. but uh, for now, um, it's sort of just been recently trying to find and uh, get together like. Uh, almost a training schedule plan yeah. whilst I'm here, just yeah. in case anything like this ever happens again. Like, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't, but like if anything like stops me from getting over to the states, yeah, um, I've got that I that I can still get the the same level of training and stuff over here. So yeah. that's what I've been sorting, and I've, I definitely feel like I've I've done that in the last couple of months, like last year or so. I have yeah. sorted out where where's good and where's like good for yeah. me to go train when I when I am here. And where I can get like the best out of it, sort of thing. So yeah, I feel like facilities and stuff in the UK have like considered like got better a lot more recently than like for, like in the past when like MMA started out in this country. A lot of like English athletes have felt like they've had to go over to like America and stuff in order to like you know what I mean get the training and that. But yeah, I feel like it's gone like up and up in this country. One hundred, a hundred percent. Like uh, the level over here, like for amateur is yeah, yeah. person is one of the, if you're one of the best amateurs in the UK at the minute, you're one of the best amateurs in the world without yeah, a doubt. Yeah. Like uh the, the fighters that are coming out of the UK now, like the levels like high as fuck. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, everyone yeah. like if you compare it to back back in the day, like even from when I first started like MMA and first started watching MMA, like the level now is so high compared to what it was. Yeah. Like fuck like if you're a top level amateur, you're as good as the top level pros are. Like for me personally, I've sparred some of the best pros in the UK. Like, yeah. if you're a top level amateur and you're fighting, like, if you're one of them amateurs who's a pussy and ain't fighting the top guys, you're just a bitch. Yeah. But like, if you're if you're one of the top amateurs and you're fighting the best guys all the time and not picking easy fights, and you and you know you're fighting the best guys because the fighters know who the best guys are. Yeah. Um, you're you're definitely one of the higher end going into the pro. Like you're already at yeah. that level. Like you might not be number one, like top five, but. You're you're definitely top twenty. Like a, a lot of the guys that I fought, I know for a fact are top in the UK and yeah. will be the top in the UK even at pro. So yeah. like, I know where my levels at for the UK, and I know I know I'm one of the best, if not the best, yeah. in weight in the country. I know that for a fact. So I think it's like quite smart doing what you did. Where like you didn't rush to go like pro, did you? Sort of. Nah, hundred percent. Yeah, that stayed. Yeah, I think, so there is that I competition think, at amateur level. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It comes down to age too. Do you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. sixteen when I had my first M- amateur MMA fight. I was young, yeah. so I knew there was no rush. Like I could have stayed amateur if I wanted to. To be honest with you, I've only just turned twenty-one. Like yeah. the end, the back end of last year. So like I, I, I still had time. If I if I wanted to wait another year or two, I could have. Yeah. But like I think that's the main thing for amateurs. There, there's no rush for you. if unless you're obviously like twenty-eight, thirty. Like it's a bit different. But if mm. you're young, there's no rush to turn pro. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, if you start rushing and making brash decisions, that's how you fuck it, fuck it up. Like once you go pro, like you can't <clears> turn <throat> back. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's yeah, no yeah. going back. Like you have to know you're ready. You have to know physically you're ready, mentally you're ready. 
and and it is different 100 so like if i could give any advice to an amateur who's coming yeah. up now don't rush make sure you're ready you're like listen to your team to your coaches and the people around you and 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 do it do it properly don't rush and think oh don't look at McGregor and think like that's how he's going to be straight away because it, yeah, yeah. it ain't. You know what I'm saying like it's not it's not that easy. Like you have to work hard to yeah. to get to get to that point. Like that's years of hard work to get there. Yeah, and, like so you can focus on different stuff that at that, that level, can't you? Yeah, definitely. Like you got to be like a lot of people look and just see like oh, as soon as you go pro, you're like on McGregor or like you're on UFC. Blah, blah, blah. It ain't that easy. Like you got to mm. you got to be able to work hard, work through. A lot of adversity and, and and just crack on. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Was there any push for you to go pro last year? Then when you did, or was it just fell natural at the time? Um, to, I wanted to go pro before I did. To be fair to you, like yeah, um, like for me, I was just like after I knocked out um, oh, what's his name, Duncan Jalali. I think he, he yeah, says yeah, last yeah. Year. Duncan. After I knocked him out, I wanted to go pro from that. Yeah. Um, but my my like buzzing off like, that oh, high, like yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> fuck me, bro. I was. I was ready to step in there and just get 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 cracking again, yeah, yeah. but my my coach said like no, uh, let's get one more like just to be safe like, and we'll get one of the best guys who we fought. And I, and to be fair, after I knocked out Duncan, I knew I was fighting Nick. I knew I was fighting Nick before I even got like before yeah. I even fought Duncan. Like I knew if we both won that night, I knew he was probably going to be. Yeah. If I stayed amateur, he was probably going to be my next fight. So I was like, he's one of the top guys. I, I want to go pro off. Off of fighting one of the best geezers in the country, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and he's a t- he was a, like as much as I lost, he's I know I could beat him, and he was a hard match. Like stylistic wise, he's one of the hardest matchups for yeah. me. So yeah, I was, was like, yeah, like we'll go, we'll go pro off that. Even if I lose, I I, I yeah. know I was ready. Like after, after that fight and how it went, like I knew I was way more suited to pro. Like that, I'd had it after that. I was like, yeah, no, nah, this is this, yeah. it's time to go pro now. Like. Amateurs is different, so yeah, you have to tell me about like, the, the Bagley fight that like you were saying. It didn't look like you took like tons of damage in that fight, like nah, he he liked to let like hold and just lay. You know what I'm saying, like yeah, if, yeah. If, the, if someone's gonna beat, I've never been beat up in a fight. To be honest with you, like I've never yeah, actually yeah. been like for me personally, I've never felt like come out of a fight being beat up. Yeah, I've, the only other time I've had a black eye is off the Duncan Jalali fight, and that lasted 33 seconds. Yeah, like. I don't get beat up in fights. Yeah. I just, I lose, uh, the, the, all the fights that I've lost, really, like, but I've made a couple mistakes where, like, Nathan Fletcher, I, me- I made a mistake. Like, that was just a split second. I made, I fucked up and I got caught. Same that was really naked, wasn't it? The Makaya fight, I think, was, that was years ago, but yeah. that was a bullshit stoppage, in my opinion, is what it is. Um, I can't change it. Ref done his job. Um, the, the only two fights that I've ever felt like I've really lost is fucking... Uh, Lee Mitchell, my first ever loss, I felt like I lost that fight. Yeah. But that was more of just like a skill set at the time. I just like my wrestling and stuff wasn't yeah. where it needed to be. Um, and then like the Nick Bagley fight, I still didn't really feel like I was devastated and gutted. Like, don't be wrong, like, I felt like I lost, but yeah. like, I knew I could have done better. Do you know what I'm saying? If it was a yeah. bit, if the if it was pro and, and whatnot. So, but it is what it is. We we crack on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but yeah, that that fight was a it was definitely a high level fight. For sure, like the, the technique in that fight was was mad, and how and and I felt good. Like I have no excuses. He beat me on the night, but um, yeah, I definitely would love to get that yeah. back. I know that. But yeah, like the striking exchanges in like the last round, like you're like really like coming into your own, like you do. Yeah, hundred percent. Like the thing, the thing was like he was so, like I, for me personally, I felt like he was like shook on my hands. Like he didn't want. He was on the feet. He was not on it. He did not want to. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So, on the when he, and when we were on the floor, he wasn't doing any damage like at all. Yeah, yeah. Like, but he won. He played the game. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he played yeah. played the game. But as in like, if that was an actual fight, he yeah. didn't hurt me once at all. Do you know what I'm saying? If out of damage wise, I feel like I did more damage. He mm. just outpointed me. Do you know what, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, that so, top, top control on the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He he just he won the round. Like he won yeah. the rounds. But I feel like. I definitely won the won the third, and if there was another two rounds, if it was yeah. a five round fight, like an like an amateur title fight, uh, that use like some are usually five rounds, uh, I feel like I would have won that fight definitely because I feel yeah. like he he gassed he got he definitely gassed out trying to hold me down. I'm not uh, someone like easy to hold down. If you notice in fights, as soon as you give me any space, 
Like, I'm getting up. Like, are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm not an easy person to hold down. And Nick Bagley's probably one of the biggest bantamweights when he like he's he's gone up to feather now. But he was yeah. one of the biggest bantamweights I think there is, and he mm. couldn't hold like he couldn't hold me down. So yeah. I, I like he he won the round because he would hold me, hold me, hold me. And then by the time I've got up, the fucking round's over. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Three minutes. It's, it goes like that. Like, it's quick. Yeah. So if you could take someone down within the first, say, if it takes you a minute to take someone down, you've only got to hold someone for a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah. And you've won that round. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. That's what you want to talk about going, like, going pro then for like the longer rounds and like throwing elbows and that sort of stuff. But... I love it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've been, the, the thing for me, even as an amateur, I trained like I was a pro. Yeah if that makes sense. I, I was like, I knew amateur was important, but like my main focus was I need to be like, I need to make sure my style is more suited to the pro game. Yeah. Than the amateur game. Like, cause in the amateur game, you could, is, if you could just wrestle fuck someone for, for nine minutes, you won. Yeah, it's very yeah. different in pro, like with the elbows, with the knees to the head, like it's, it's, it is different. And with five minute rounds, it's hard to hold someone like yeah. to hold someone for that long. Do you know I mean, especially when you're going into the to the title fights for the five fives, like mm. you've got to be able to do everything. So for me, I was just trying to make sure I was ready. My my style was more suited to the pros. And even Brad Pickett said that to me after I lost to Nick. He said to me, my style is definitely way more suited to the pro game. Mm. So that was an extra added boost just to to turn pro. Do you know what I mean? Like even if mm. he's saying that and he knows what he's on about, like I, I got to take that. So yeah, don't look like cardio is ever something you've had like ever had a problem with like in any year. Yeah, no, nah, uh, I tried like the to later rounds. You always like still doing fine. Yeah, no, nah, def definitely. Like, I think the mate, like that's that. I can control. Like, there's some things you just can't control in a fight. But one thing I can control is making sure I'm the fittest and most physically and mentally ready I can before I go in there. So I pride yeah. myself on, like, being able to, like, in a fight. I, I, I like, I hope for the best. Like, I, I wish I could just go in there and get a 30 second KO every time. But yeah. I mean, like, I want that, but I. Uh, in, in the back of my mind, I, I'm preparing myself to go for the hardest I can go for 15 or 25 minutes. I like whoever fights me knows like you're gonna have to fight for the whole 15 minutes or however long that fight goes. 25 minutes, whatever it is, like you you best know that I'm coming to finish you and fuck you up for the whole time. I ain't yeah. play, I'm not coming to to play a game of like oh I'm I'm just gonna try and win a fight now fuck that I'm trying to fuck you up like yeah you, you're fighting at the end of the day you want to hurt me like you think I'm gonna let you fucking punch me up in front of my family in front of my friends nah yeah. like do you know what I mean like I'm I'm ready to go for the whole for for the whole time so yeah in in the back of my mind I'm I'm always prepared and and as mentally and physically ready that, to that go Max, for 15 to 20 Max Holloway minutes. mentality of just like I can go on that yeah no nah, that's <laughs> it like, I'll go for that. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll not, not stop working for the whole time we're fighting. Like, mm. I pride myself on being someone who can go and go and go and you will not break me. Like, mm. I will never quit. You will not see me give up. Like, I will keep fighting. Like, I, I know when to pick and choose. Like, if, I, if I'm in an arm bar and you're going to snap my arm off, like, if I feel like when I like when I lost to Kieran Moholland, I tapped, yeah, but I know when to, like, fight another day. I'm not stupid, like, why would I let you snap my arm in a fight so I can't yeah. fight again for another fucking however long? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not dumb. Like, so, like, when people say, oh, like, you, you tap, you quit. Nah, 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 nah. I'm just not fucking stupid. Like, I'm an amateur. Why the fuck would I yeah. let yeah. someone snap my arm as an amateur? I ain't getting paid. What? what are you dumb? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, if it was a UFC total fight, fuck, rip my arm off. Yeah, yeah. Take it home with you if you want. I'll hit you with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, as an amateur, like, no, I'm not stupid. Like, I remember saying to my coaches after, I wish I let him snap my arm. Yeah. And my coaches were like, just looked at me like, are you, what? Are you stupid? Like, mm. why would you do that? Like, that's that's more detrimental to you than than the losses. Like, the losses are learning experience. Like, yeah. I've never, uh, and I tell you what, that is one thing, like, after losing to Moore Holland, like, and Nathan Fletcher too. Like, those two losses definitely gave me the, the men mentality of never switch off in a fight doesn't matter how far you're winning yeah or even though the the Nathan Fletcher fight's a bit different because I, I that that fight was just too quick yeah so but like with the Mulholland fight like I was Pete like I just got mentally I just switched off like for that split second I switched off thinking this is easy like I'm talking yeah. with him so yeah. I mean I switched off so that that definitely I, I'm glad I've had the losses I've had in my amateur career like I don't yeah. look back and think oh like 
I'm glad it had them. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that's, yeah. that for me is a very big, like, I've, you need losses as an amateur, I think, to know where you need to, if you just win, 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 like, where do you need to know if you, like, yeah. you know where you need to improve anyway, but like, if you're constantly winning, your mentality is going to be like, I'm winning, why, why should I change anything? Yeah. So for me, it was, I'm glad I've had the losses I've had, definitely. After each year, lastly, you start but you start breaking them down there, seeing what you can take away from like, into the next. Yeah, from, like, the next like for me, I'm, sorry, man, I interrupted you there. Can't no, 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 just, yeah, just gone. <laughs> but yeah, no, for for me, the losses are are more more like better than I take more from a loss than I have ever from a win, like from winning a fight. Like mm. as much as it, like I, I, I'm one of them people. I take a loss hard. Like if you, if anyone who ever's been around me after I've lost a fight, I'm not. No, I'm not pleasant to be around. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not one of them people that's going to be like laughing and joking and ha ha ha. Like I've just lost a fight and I've given my all. I'm one of them people like if I've given a hundred percent to something and I've lost and I lost, like I'm man up and take it like a man. But I'm devastated. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it hits home. But like, I'm man enough to say it. I've cried after fights that I've lost. Yeah, yeah. I'm man enough to say it. Do you know what I mean? But like I'm glad I've had them losses because they show me where I need to improve and what I need to do as a, and it shows and it. And it makes it showed me who I am as a man. Like I'm never gonna give up. Like I went on a free fight losing streak as an amateur. A lot of people probably would have thought this ain't for me and just fucked it off. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. for me personally, like and anyone who watches my fights, like if you actually watch, like they're not even as like losses and wins. Like I'm fighting the best guys and they're close fights. Like my level's there. I just need yeah. to stop making stupid mistakes or like I just need to sharpen up a couple of things which I feel like I have been doing. Yeah. And I feel like. And, and anyone that sparred with me, like, in the last year or so, um, uh, from the start of last year, like, it's weird. I feel like my level would just jump massively since the Bagley fight. Like, my wrestling, everything, like, my grappling. Like, I've been sparring some of the best guys in the UK, like Jake Hadley, Don Wooden. I sparred, I've been, like, I've sparred these guys. And and they're the top guys. And, and, and my level's there. Sam yeah. Creasy, all of them boys, like, my level's there. So I, I just got to start putting in the performances now. Like I did in my last fight, uh, I feel like I put a performance to where I showed I can grapple, I showed my top pressure, I showed mm. like my sprawls there, like I, I can stop a takedown. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I, I, I know when I step back in there, I'm going to, like, whoever's in front of me is getting fucked up, I can tell you that. <laughs> no, you can see how, like, you, you've definitely gotten better, like, throughout your amateur career. Like, like you say, your takedown defense, like, definitely just, like, got better and stuff. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. Like, I've never been outstruck. Like, I've trained with some of the best guys in the world. Like, or just mm. all over the world. Like I, I sparred with Mov that have you ever heard that Mov Sar Uh I don't think so. He, he beat Mike Grundy. He broke Mike Grundy's jaw. The Russian geezer, he's like top 15 now. He's he's a featherweight. Yeah, yeah. He's coming through anyway. Him, like he's been touted as one of the big prospects in here. I sparred him when I was 17 in Thailand. Yeah. And he was he was pro and he was M1 Global World Champ at this yeah. point. And I'm sparring him when I was 17 years old and not getting outstruck. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't be wrong. He beat me. He definitely kicked my ass, but like yeah. I didn't get like outstruck or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? So, like I know my my striking's always been there. It's just been like getting the wrestling and the grappling up to that point now. And and now I feel like my grappling and my wrestling's getting there. Like mm. I don't feel like there's many people in the world that can hack like at my weight class, especially. I don't feel like there's anyone that can really hang with me on the feet. Like yeah. I know guys. As soon as this, like it's all like. A lot of guys can say, oh, like, da, da, da. when you're in front of me, it's different. Like, if you watch, even when I fought strikers who were who never shoot, they shoot straight away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Jack Temple, when have you ever, like, really ever seen him try and really take anyone down? Like, he's a striker mm. throwing through. I stood there toe to toe with him straight away. But like, I didn't take a step back. I started throwing down. And yeah. he shot. Like, yeah. I'm one of them, like, I'm, I'll make a striker shoot. I'll turn strikers to wrestlers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> Yeah, no, I can say like you like to keep the pressure up, don't you? Like pushing the like, taking control 100%. of the obstacle like early. I, on. I don't like yeah. being and playing. That shit's boring, man. No one. Well, like if I'm, I, I've got so to get to Colchester for me is a three, four hour drive sometimes. Like three hours, depend on traffic. Do you know what I mean? So like it's a far, it's it's far away. I don't, I don't want to like my fam. Like I'm taking fifty people up there with me. Mm. I don't want them to drive there and just watch me lay on someone. Like that's just boring. Oh, like my yeah. mates. Like the people who I surround myself with, they would rip me if I just went and bum hugged someone on the floor. They'd be like, "What, <laughs> what are you yeah. doing?" Do you know what I mean? So that for me, I I, I'm, I I feel like I've got an exciting style. I try, I come, I come to win, and I'll do whatever it takes to get the win. So if that does mean I have to take you down 
and and hold you down and beat you up on the floor like I would do that. I'm mm. like I, I I pride myself on being able to go wherever the fight goes. But for me personally, if I've got a choice on how the fight wants to go, I'm keeping it on the feet. I want to make it exciting for the people that have come to watch, come to pay, and I and, and I want to put on a like that is an entertainment business. If your fucking fight style is boring, like yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna get there. If you want to stand out, you've got to be as much as you yeah you got to talk shit. Just be yourself. But yeah. if if just Make sure your fight style talks. Like you can talk all you want on here, but make sure your fight style is to back it up. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like if I say I'm gonna stand, like trust me, you know, like I'm coming. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like there's there's a lot of people out here who just like talk, like oh yeah, fucking I got hands. They, as soon as they get in a fight, they're shooting for their life and just hold it. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? If you're gonna, if that's your style, that's your style. Like there's nothing wrong with that, but don't talk like you're a striker or. Say yeah. this and blah 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 blah. Just be you, and if you're the sort of person who's gonna take someone down, yeah, just just do mm. that. But don't talk like you're gonna come in and fuck my man up and da da da. Do you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. no, no. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Though there's a lot of like, it's it's there's a lot of people in this game who are very fake at the same time as there's a lot of real people. Like, I've mm. met some of the the realest and nicest people ever through fighting, but there's also a lot of fake people who just talk. A lot of shit on the internet. Yeah. But when it comes face to face, like, oh, you're all right, mate. Like, yeah. you know, all pally and this, and uh, that's not, no. No, nah, so you'll see a lot of like calling people out online. But when they're like together at like, you know, events or press conferences, they're all just like shaking hands and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, the other not the same, is it? Yeah, like, it's like that Michael Chandler, like, talk when he got asked that question in the press conference when he sat next to Connie's, like, and he was saying to people before I'm the size up. Thingy like size Connor up and so, but as soon as he's like sat next to him and that, he's yeah. not his any. You've seen his energy. He's like, oh yeah, no, nah, like being all nice about yeah, it. Yeah. Like, just be real. Like if you're a nice person, like yeah. just be you. Just be like yeah. you. If you're don't yeah, like, Stephen Thompson's like that. Not, like, <laughs> don't just say things in interviews for the sake of saying it. Like if you're mm. saying yeah, I'm gonna size someone up. If you see them in person, keep that same energy. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like. If you're saying, yeah, if I see him, like, I'm, like, do you know what I mean? Like, keep that. Yeah, yeah. Don't, like, act all, like, oh, uh, like, size, I'm going to, yeah, when I see him, I'm going to size him up, like, do you know what I mean? But then you see him, you're like, oh, you're right, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it, yeah. I've got no beef with no one, so, like, I, I, if I see someone, unless I've got beef with them, I'll be like, yes, mate, you're right, how you doing? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just, but, like, if, if, I've, if someone's talking shit about me on the internet, but then when I see them, they're like, oh, you're right, mate. Like, who keep that energy? Do you know what I mean? A lot of people yeah. in this game just don't. I think like, a lot of it's like trying to sell the like sell the fight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I get it. It yeah. is a business. Like, I, I get it. Like, a hundred percent. I get where. Like, but do it. Like, don't sell your soul. Don't be fake. Someone you're not. Soul, like, do you know what I'm trying? Yeah. You know like, what I mean? Probably someone you're not. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just be you. Be mm. if people like you, they'll like you for you. Like, don't change. Anyone yeah. who knows me knows I'm I'm me. Where like that's just me. I'm me as a person. I ain't yeah. gonna change for no one. Whoever is in the like, do you know what I mean? So mm. like, there's a lot of people in in this game that just do a lot for social media. Just be yourself on social. Do you know what I mean? Like Darren Till says it. Like don't be a fake fighter. Like don't be doing all this. Just mm. be you, and people will like you for you. If people don't like. And and, and if yeah. you're not one of them people who's big on social, like make sure your fight style backs it up. Yeah. Don't try and be like cause drama on social for the sake of hey, I'm trying to sell a fight like with why are you trying to sell a fight we're still at the start of our careers like the only mm. people that are really watching at the minute is hardcore fans that know who you are you're, the people your friends around you when you're at the top yeah I, I, I get it. it's a bit more of a business like put it in there but don't be fake about it like yeah. be you and yeah. sell it sell it as yourself don't try and be someone that you're not do you know what I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um was it after the Galbo fight? You, you stepped up to a, from a bantam, no, flyweight to a bantamweight, didn't you? I feel like I've got that yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah Francesco <laughs> Legalbo. Yeah, 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 Butchered yeah. his name, but yeah. Why did you, uh, what was there like motivation for stepping up to uh, bantamweight? Like, uh... Uh, the weight cut, the weight yeah. cut was just getting, like for the eight man tournament, that was the yeah. last time I made, uh, made flyweight. And I remember obviously I'd done that and that, that weight cut, like, I, uh, that was hard. Like, jet, like yeah. anyone and anyone who knows me knows how hard that weight cut was and was around me. Like, yeah. like I would never miss weight. If I sign 
on the dotted line to say I'm going to make that weight. Like, yeah. I'm going to do my all to make that weight. So, I like I made it, but like it was definitely not good for me, like for my health to to keep doing that. Like, yeah. the stress that I put my body under to make that weight, like, was worth it in the long run because I won, like, and I and I and I got the job done. But like, if I, at, at the age I was, like, to keep doing that, that would have just fucked me up. In years yeah. to come, like I knew, I knew after that it was just like, yeah, this is it's time to step up. But to be fair, it didn't take me until like a, a, a while after the fight to think, like, listen to my coaches, step up because I was going to fight again. Mm. At, uh, flyweight. I was going, I was going to fight. Um, like I've got all respect to him. He's he's a sound geezer. I remember speaking to him actually about maybe fighting with him just on private message. Muhyiddin Abu Bakar, like sound geezer. Like, I know, like he's he's sound. I remember speaking to him and we were uh, and, and back and forth. Like, nothing like beef or anything like that, but I remember yeah. him saying that we could end up fighting. But I was like, oh, actually, like, I'm probably, I'm going to go up a weight class, like, to be fair. Mm. Like, because I can't make, like, I could just couldn't make that weight, like, healthily, like, it would have fucked me up. Yeah. So, and it would have, and, and it would have shown in the fight. I know for a fact if I tried to make that weight again, yeah, like, it would have shown in the fight because I wouldn't have performed. So, like, that was the, the reason I moved up, but like even then, like cutting the bantamweight was a piece of piss. Like I was making making yeah. sixty one on the day. You feel like, a lot more comfortable at bantamweight, like a lot more strong. Yeah, that was. Uh, I don't know why I said it was a piece of piss because that was still hard <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, like, that that killed me trying to do it. But like, yeah, I just knew it was time to go up a weight class. Definitely. You feel a lot more comfortable like, at bantamweight, it's a lot more stronger and a lot more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I'm just growing. Like I'm, I'm only twenty one, so like I'm just, I'm just growing into my like my man body, like. Yeah. I've still not fully grown yet, so like I know I could end up moving up again to feather. I like because I yeah. don't walk around small. Like, I'm walking around now at like 74, 75 kilos. Like yeah, I'm yeah. not small as a bantamweight, so like I know I could end up moving up again, but we'll we'll, we'll see. So yeah, um, uh, it was it was the uh, Pitcherry fight uh, last year, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. That was your uh, that was your debut. When do you reckon you'll be uh, fighting again? You got anything planned in the future? Or? Well, I was hoping for um, Cage Rose Academy Southeast in March. Yeah. Um, that's what me, the, my team, my management, we had, we had spoken. Um, but obviously, I'm not sure if that's happening yet. Um, because of R Rona, I'm not sure if they can get the permission for... It's not so much that they can put a show on. It's more of like uh, certain, I think, certain like venues and stuff can't hold things yeah. because yeah. of COVID. So I think they're struggling with that. Yeah. Um, but at the minute now, I'm not too sure because of my injury. I'm my main focus at the minute. My my head's just on getting that back to 100, percent and then sort of just going from there. But I'm hoping January, February, March, April, May, May, latest. I want to get. I want to get. What well, if I can get before May? But like, I want to be fighting as, yeah. as soon as I can. Really, as soon as my elbow's back to to 100, percent I'm I'm putting myself into a camp. No fight. Yeah. Like, whether I'm matched up or not, I just want to. I want to be ready for whatever yeah. sort of can come my way. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You seem like someone who's like training all the time. Anyway, always in the gym, always keeping fit. Yeah, I I, I try to pride myself on being someone who, like, just because you've won a fight doesn't mean you don't go back in the back in the gym on the Monday and 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 help the people who have helped you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're 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 a team. So if someone's been put in two two three months of hard work to help me. Who am I to just because I've won a fight? Yeah. Like not return the favor. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I tried to make sure I'm back in the gym on the Monday. Even if I'm not training, I'm helping. Yeah. Or, yeah. or something. So I tried to get back straight back in the gym. And, yeah. and and for me, I feel like a lot of fighters like fuck up in the way of like after a fight, they just pit like piss off don't do nothing for a while and then just go yeah. back into a training camp. Like that's for me, I feel like I make a lot of my improvements outside of camps. Mm. Like because you haven't got a fight, you can work on what you need to work on without having the pressure of, right, I need to make sure I'm fit. I need to make sure I'm doing this because he does yeah. this well. Or I need to make sure I'm doing this because this is what I'm planning on trying to work in the fight, blah, 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 blah. So like out of camp is just focusing on staying sharp, making sure I'm always getting better. Like yeah. me and my strength conditioning coach have got a motto at the minute is, Win each day. Take yeah. each day for each day and win the day. Like, make sure you're improving on... As, as long as you're improving every day on one aspect, like, before you know it, like, you've, you're improving on everything. 
Right? Yeah. So each day I'm trying to make sure I'm improving, whether it's mentally, physically, whatever it is, like I'm trying to just improve every day. Yeah. And and outside of camp, like the main thing is, like I've been saying, is just work on what you need to work on to yeah. make you better. Like if out, out of camp, I know like my striking is my strong suit, so I keep that sharp. But I'm, my main focus outside of camp is not to, like, get my, like, make my striking better, yeah, but my main focus is, right, in my last fight, I got held down in this position, right, I need to make sure I'm working in that position yeah. to make sure that never happens to me again. Yeah. So when I go into camp, I haven't got to think, right, like, I need to do, to, to be doing this because this is what, like, I've already done that, like, yeah. I've been I've been doing that. Like, when, when I go into camp, it's just sharpening everything, staying sharp, mm. getting ready, like, I've, I've been doing that, like, I've, yeah. I've been getting better. So when I go into a camp, it's just, right now, it's just fine-tuning things, make sure I'm not yeah. getting injured, staying healthy, getting my like, weight down. If you're training like, all the time anyway, you sort of got that yeah, baseline, yeah, yeah, yeah. haven't you? So if, I'm having yeah. a training camp. Stay fit all year round. Like, yeah. to an extent, I want to... Uh, uh, Brendan Lockney, I remember seeing him say, like, he makes sure he can go two, two at least two rounds all year round. Yeah. Like, if, if, if someone was to ask him, could you go two hard rounds right now? Yeah. Could you do it? Yeah. And if he says no, he knows he's not staying in shape. So I, I, I've seen that and I was like, yeah, that's what I've, I, I've taken that since I heard it. Like I was doing it before anyway, but since I heard him say it in that way, I was like, yeah, that's what, that's just the way I need to interpret it. Like I yeah. need to make sure I can go two rounds all, the, all year round without fail. Like mm. for me, I'm going to one up that. I'm going to, I want to make sure I can go three outside of camp. Yeah. So when I go in a camp, if I, if I got to do five rounds, yeah, yeah nothing. I could, I could go five rounds, fresh guy each round. Yeah. What like so that's my mentality is stay improving, stay working, don't be lazy. Yeah. Like because with the sport is still so young, like yeah. there's you're never like each weekend there's a new thing that someone's like brought out and it's fun. Like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, you can never there's never you've you've never learned everything. I think you seen like a lot of fighters at the minute are like being more like rewarded for taking fights at the last minute and like that's how yeah fighters are like yeah, like Kevin Holland and that last year, like 100%. Five, for me, for me right. on short notice fights, um, I'm a bit different. Like, don't be wrong, I've taken short notice fights. Like, my first yeah. amateur fight was on like two weeks notice or like three weeks notice or something like that. I think it was. Yeah. But I've taken short short notice, but I wouldn't take a short notice fight unless I was 100 percent confident yeah. and knew I could go in there and not just like I wouldn't just take a fight for the sake of to get a pat on the back of someone. Like yeah. your pat on the back means fuck all. Like I need to do what's best for my career. So the way I look at taking short notice fights, if it's the right thing to do, like I'll do it. Yeah. But I'm not stupid. Like I'm like, I'm not dumb. I'm not just going to take a short notice fight because I want to get a pat on the back now. I'll, I'll take a fight yeah. if I know, if, if it's the right fight to take at the time and, and I, and I know I'm ready, but I wouldn't just take a fight for the sake of yeah. taking a fight. To, it's to, like going to on your take... professional record, isn't it as well? Yeah. It's... 100%. Yeah. As a, like, cause as an amateur, your record don't matter. Yeah. Like generally, it actually doesn't like my amateur record now. Like I didn't have a, the best amateur record, but like I'm known as one of the best amateurs in the country. Yeah. Like even though I've had losses. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm still like a loss doesn't define you. You know what I'm saying? Like just because you lost a fight doesn't actually like it doesn't make it doesn't change the person you are. Mm. You know I mean, you're you lose a fight, yeah, you're fucking gutted, but it is what it is. Like man, the fuck up and crack <laughs> on. Like yeah. that that. But that's just how like I was always like my team around me, like my coach. He's yeah. hard nosed. Like I remember after I beat Duncan, that was thirty three seconds. I don't think I've that. That's my quickest fight ever. I remember he come up to me like not even five minutes after I got out of the cage, and he come yeah. up to me and he was like, "Drag that out, didn't you?" Like, do you know what I mean? So like I've always had like yeah. my coaches will never give me like like get let me get what's the word like stationary. Like they're always like. I could win I probably I, I, when I win my first world title, they'll probably still be nitty picking at me, like <laughs> bantering me, telling me I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Drag it out. Do you know what I mean? I could knock him out in 10 seconds. He'd still probably turn around and be like, fuck me, what, what took you so long? Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, like, I've, and, and he was always one of them people I remember after my first loss. Like, I was devastated. He was like, just, like, he let me take it how I took it, but he was like, you, like, this is where you learn. This is where you become a man. Like, a mm. loss is what makes you as a fighter. Yeah. That's where you find out who you are. Like, yeah. if you're one of the, like, this is how I know for a fact I'll never quit in a fight because I've been two rounds down going into a third round where if it goes to the judge's decision, I ain't winning. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I know I ain't ever going to quit. Like, and Nick Bagley will know this, like, from, from fighting me, 
he won the first two rounds, like not like convincingly, but he won them. Like mm. everyone, anyone in that room would have said, "Yeah, he's, he's two rounds up." So, and and him knowing that, I come out and I I I gave him the hardest round he had. Like yeah. I'll be, I, like that's why that's why I know I will not quit. Like I've got I've got that. That's why I'm glad I've had the losses because I know I've got that inside yeah. me. Like if I'm down rounds. Yeah, you can tell you it's like stepping it up in that final round. Yeah, so if I need, like if I need to just fucking bite down and go, like I know I've got that. Whereas yeah. if you've never had a loss as an amateur and you've just had easy fights, you don't know that going into your pro career. Like yeah. I know going into my, like I knew going into my pro career, if I'm down two rounds and I've got to finish, like I, I, I've got that fight down and go. Whereas mm. some people don't know if they've got that because they've just taken easy fights as an amateur or yeah. like just take the best fights for them instead of taking the hardest fights yeah. that will push them the most. Do you know what I mean, that they, that they can grow from. I thought that so, Jordan Baxter fight was like a great win for you as well. So. Obviously, I had like a solid record in that tournament as well. I thought yeah, hundred percent. That that's he was fucking nails. I'll give him that. <laughs> Shit, he took some fucking digs. But um, yeah, now nah, that's like that tournament. Like I, like that, I was happy with all the performances I put in because, like, for me, I got to show on that night, like all my game. Like, I got to show my grappling. I got and I, and I fought like the two two of the geezers I fought were grapplers. Yeah, like Jordan Baxter and Ashley Covington are mainly grapplers. Yeah. And, and I grappled with them. I think that's like a main, like, big, like big treat people have you fighting as you are. You just, uh, your floor is like your, uh, like your ground game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah, you, yeah. Like, you see performances like that and it's just like... Yeah, you know, 100%. I think the thing is like, a, like every fight's different. So like when, like, do you, do you train? Do you do, you do MMA? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't? So, yeah. well, if you ever, gra- like anyone who's ever grappled knows it, like, like it's different. Like a lot of people have different ways of grappling and there's, there's always things that you're like, fucking hell, like, what the fuck? So, yeah. like, for me, going against two guys in one night, they had two very different grappling. Yeah. Like, their grappling was so different. Like, the pressure and stuff, it was definitely different. So, mm. like, to have that experience of, like, feeling that, like, I was I was buzzing, so. Yeah. Uh, and I got to out-grapple Jack Temple, which was nice. So, <laughs> but I got to show my top pressure, which, which yeah. I was happy with. Uh, uh, cheers for chatting to me, man. No, no worries, brother. Really no worries, brother. No, my yeah. man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, best of luck in, uh, into the future. Looking forward to seeing you yeah. fight again. I think you... My man. Thank <laughs> you very much, bro. Thank you. Cheers, man. Spot on. <laughs>